So what we have here is we have a cable that's got a distributed load hanging under it that weighs 600 newtons per meter. It is 100 meters long, um, the horizon, horizontal distance between the two supports, and vertically they're 20 meters apart. And here at this end, the cable is inclined where it begins at 10 degrees. So what we need to do is we need to find the maximum tension in this cable and that's what we're going over in this video. So I've got the steps written out down in the description. And if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So what we need to try to do is we need to um, solve for the maximum tension, which we can use or which we can find using this equation. This equation gives us the tension at any given angle theta. Well, the maximum tension is going to occur where our angle theta is the highest, which will occur up here at the support. And so we need to find what that angle theta is, and we need to find what the horizontal tension in the cable is in order to find out what this T is. And the process that we're going to use to get there is we are going to use this equation, which is the double integral of the loading function multiplied by the inverse of the um, horizontal tension. And we will also be using this one, which is gives us the basically the slope function. And we know that, that is equal to the tangent of theta. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to label our axis system here. We're going to say that this right here is our origin. We'll say that this is the x direction and this is the y direction. So right here where that connection is, is zero, zero. And that'll be important when we are solving for the boundary conditions after we integrate this function. So writing this out after it's integrated is going to look like y equals one over the horizontal component of the tension times by our um, loading function, which is going to be a constant. So it's going to be 600, um, 600 newtons per meter. So we'll write that here. And divided by 2x squared plus c1 x plus c2. So these c's are the constants of integration. C1 comes from the first integration, C2 comes from the second integration, and we need to find out what those are. So this whole function gives us the sh parabolic shape of this curve. And so um, to find C1, we can plug in some things that we know about X and Y. And with how we've set up our um, coordinate system, we know that x is 0 right here when y is also 0. So we can plug in 0 for y and 0 for x. And when we do that, we can see that this will go to 0 and this term will go to 0. And you'll end up get, getting that c2 divided by th equals 0. And we know our horizontal tension can't be 0 and because that will leave it undefined. And so we know that c2 equals zero. So this is going to just drop out. Now to find C1, what we can do is we can integrate our slope function. And that is dy dx equals one over the horizontal component of the tension uh, multiplied by our wx, which we said was 600. So 600x plus C1. Now we can use some things we know about dy dx, which is the slope. Um, we know that the slope, when x equals 0, is 10 degrees. So we can use that um, here. And we also know that dy dx equals tangent of theta. And so we can replace dy dx with tangent of theta, and we know that theta is 10 degrees when x is zero, so we will say that the tangent of 10 degrees 
equals 1 over t sub h multiplied by 600 times by 0. So that's going to drop out plus c1. So this is 0, so it'll be tangent of 10 degrees equals c1 divided by th. Multiply the th over, and you get that c1 equals t sub h tangent of 10 degrees. And then using, we have c1, so we can plug it back into this equation or this equation, and we will need these both later on, so we are going to um, remember them. And I'm going to rewrite these up here, maybe a little bit smaller with C1 replaced. So with these equations, we can now figure out what TH is, which is our horizontal component of the tangent, uh, of the tension. So some other things that we know about our curve function is we know that when y is 20, x is 100. So if we plug in 20 for y and 100 for x, we can solve for what um, what th is. And now, so I've simplified this, and I haven't I wrote this as theta, but it should be 10 degrees. So we are going to rewrite this as 20 equals, we're going to distribute this th in um, for simplicity. We'll have 300 times by 100 squared divided by th plus, this th got um, divided out by that, plus tangent of 10 degrees. I'm just going to replace that right in here. We have this is 10 degrees. This is also 10 degrees. And multiply that by x, which is 100. So add this over to the other, or subtract it over to the other side. Um, divide 300 times by 100 squared, which is 3 million. Divide it by both sides and take the reciprocal. And then we end up getting that th equals 1,000 or 1,267,265 1, I believe and that is in newtons so that's a really big number let's just convert it into kilonewtons which is 1,267 kilonewtons so we've changed this into kilonewtons we have our horizontal component of our tension. Um, now that we're working in kilonewtons, let's convert this also into kilonewtons. So this equals 0 0.6 kilonewtons per meter. And now that we have the horizontal component of the tension, we can use that to solve for what theta is. And we'll use these equations here. We know that dy dx equals tangent of theta. Well, we have what dy dx is. So using this equation, we know that dy dx equals tangent of theta. So this function tells us what the theta is at any given x along our, um, along our cable. So if we plug in 100 for x, we can find out what theta is at this point which is going to be our maximum theta here. So we're going to rewrite this equation to be that the tangent of theta, we'll call it theta max, equals our equation. We're going to plug in T sub h into here and, um, and then distribute it through. So we get that 600 divided by 1267x squared um, I'm going to replace the x with 100 because we're plugging in 100 for x to find our theta max. So 100 squared, not squared, because we're using the dy dx. So plus the tangent of 10 degrees. 
And now something important to note here that we are plugging in 100 for um, x. We're evaluating dy dx or the slope function at 100. That is different than um, evaluating this equation from 0 to 100 or integrating it from 0 to 100. Um, you will not get the same answer um, for theta if you do that. So just as a side note. So um, doing the math on all this, we get that theta max is equal to 12.61 degrees. So there's our maximum theta. We have our horizontal um, component of the tension. We can now plug these into this equation to find our maximum tension. And so since we're plugging in the maximum angle, we can plug in, and we know that that's going to be the maximum tension. So we'll call it T max equals our horizontal component of the tension. So we're going to divide, divide the cosine of theta over here. So we'll have this 12. 67 kilonewtons divided by the cosine of 12.61 degrees and you end up getting that that equals 1299 kilonewtons and you could also rewrite that as 1.3 meganewtons if you wanted and that is our maximum tension that occurs right up here at the reaction point. So that is how you solve for the maximum tension in the cable. If you want to solve for the minimum tension, you could just use this equation to plug in um, 10 for theta and plug in the horizontal component of the tension. And that would give you the tension right here. Um, and there's lots of other things you could solve for in this, but that is how you do it. You use these, equ these equations and that'll help you out a lot. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can leave them down in the comments. Once again, I've gotten the steps written out down in the description. Also in the description, I've got some links to Amazon and Teespring where you can buy some merch from Student Engineering and buying that helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, student engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe.